Before Rory finds out if he has ADHD, he wants to know why people with ADHD behave the way they do. So, he's come to King's College in South London to see if looking at their brains can provide any answers. Hi there. Hi, Rory. Very nice to meet you in person. Good, good to see you. Thank Professor you Katia much. Rubia has spent much of her working life studying the ADHD brain. So what I'm really keen to find yeah. out is, is, is an ADHD brain different? Yeah. How it is, is it different? Yeah. It is, in fact, very different, both in the structure of the brain and the function of the brain. So you could say the hardware of the brain and the software of the brain, both is, is underdeveloped. OK. So what, what are we looking at here? These are slices through the brain. So we're, are we so looking this, from the top yes. down, like yeah. the camera's here? Yeah, this would be the top, and then you go down. So this is around the eye levels, and this is sort of lower part. So oh, these I are see. horizontal okay. cuts through the brain. Okay. And that's an MRI image. And uh, this is based it's on like the... brain carpaccio. Yes, exactly. What jumps out are the, the yellow areas. Uh, what, are, what are we looking at there? Yeah, so the yellow areas are areas which are smaller in ADHD compared to healthy controls. And the areas we found are most consistently uh, smaller in structure are these frontal lobe regions, uh, which is in the frontal part of the brain, and the basal ganglia deep in the brain. And the frontal lobe and the basal ganglia are connected. OK, so what do those parts of the brain actually do? These parts of the brain, they mediate many functions, which are very important for mature adult behaviour. For example, the ability to self-restrain yourself, to inhibit yourself. In ADHD patients, of course, they have problems with self-control. Impulsive. Yeah. Impulsive, yeah, exactly. They're impulsive. They're, they also mediate attention. Uh, they also have problems with timing behaviour. For example, uh, you know, they, if you are impulsive, you do things prematurely, too early in time, and you don't consider the consequences of your act, so you, you act in the spur of the moment and later you think. Oh, so it's like, like having a filter, really, isn't it? Something that will stop you from doing something inappropriate or yes. saying something yes. out of turn or interrupting. E yes, exactly. The degree of inattention and impulsivity will vary from person to person, just as the changes in brain structure will vary too. So I have an example of a test which we use to measure self-control in ADHD. And this task, is the, the, the performance on this test is typically impaired in, in children with ADHD. So it's called the stop task. Do you want to try? Yeah, sure, absolutely. OK, right. If the arrow points left or right, Rory must press the corresponding button. But if the arrow points up, he must hold back and resist the urge to press. Oh, you see, I'm cracking crack this. Oh, no, I thought I just got that now. And then, oh. It's a test of self-restraint, not something Rory finds easy. OK. That's getting, it's getting better, better. better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have to say, Katja, you have the perfect voice for this in the background, saying, no, you are not concentrating. Please <laughs> try a little bit harder. Why this the whole... It's that is the point of the exercise. Exactly. That's why we are testing. I'm so sorry. That was really very... It's <laughs> <laughs> incredibly rude of me. I know. Do people get upset with you? Uh, yes. <laughs> but uh, not for long. OK. I'm not surprised. But you see it's impulsive behaviour. <laughs> OK, the task is now finished. Mm-hmm. Despite Rory's efforts, it's not a test he can win. He's simply having a go at the task Katia uses during imaging studies. So the task which you've just done, this is the typical task we do in an MRI scanner with children with ADHD and, and normal children, and then we compare the activity in the brain. So I can show you how it looks like. This is the results, yeah? So what you see here is the activity in the brain of the healthy adolescents. Mm -hmm. So they activate again the frontal part of the brain and the basal ganglia. So these connections are important for stopping your behavior. These areas are less activated. They are activated in the healthy adolescents, but they are not activated in ADHD. So you see, this is empty. Yeah? Okay. So, so the part of the brain that would inhibit yeah. uh, you from, yeah. from doing something wrong is, is simply missing. Is simply missing. Well, it's it's less activated. It's less recruited, yeah. And that's why they are not good in the task. That's a big assumption, by the way. I just <laughs> got to say. 
But I do find you very attractive, so that's okay. Uh, that was me so, in character. You're such a good okay. Trump, isn't he? Yeah. Such a good well, you know, we, there's a line. You should there's do a, line a Trump one on Trump. TV. I know I do, I do a Trump yeah. thing until I do it all the time, like, by the way. So, okay. So, I think what really struck me there was I was expecting to see in an ADHD brain, I was expecting to see ooh, all sorts of activity, you know, all the, all the fun and all the kind of Catherine wheels and all that and, and being able to say that, do you know what, actually we're so much more clever and we're so much, uh, we have so much more fun. Uh, and instead there was kind of like a silence of saying, well, where, where is it? Where, where's, where's all that stuff that we need? Where's all that, where's, where, where are the networks? Where's, where's all these things that typical people have, where is it?